Hello, so we're going to talk a little bit about the neurology of sex. But first, I wanted to carry on that one word a day type thing, uh, one word a video when I remember. And if you recall, I mentioned arrogance the last time, and I went to look up superb from the Italian superbo, which is different from arrogant. Now, arrogant is somebody who thinks he can, but can't, says he can, but can't. Maybe believes or convinces other people that he can, but really, he can't. While superb, although it has various definitions for buildings, etc., but when it comes to people, which is number five, proud or haughty. Um, and it gives an example, for example, of before he died, he burned a world of papers and said that the world was not worthy of them. He was so superb. But you see, the thing about being superb is um, confused in English because the English use arrogant for somebody who can um, and is just not modest about it, as well as for somebody who can't and says he can, which is really incorrect. So while you might accuse me of arrogance, I am not actually arrogant. I can be superb and I can use that to... Uh, piss off the stragglers. It's kind of a filter for intelligence. But anyway, brand new topic. The neurology of sex. Um, I wanted to discuss this a little bit because it has many, many branches. I won't be able to cover all of them, but there's a number of things. Um, and it, the original thought I was going to discuss was sort of a little bit of a follow on from the video I did on women. And it's how sex affects women um, differently from men and why you know the, there's the uh, the adage basically that a woman that's been with a lot of men is never really gonna be a, a good wife while a man that slept with a lot of women can still be a good husband now it obviously depends on definitions of good and so on and so forth but if you appreciate how neurology actually works and the fact that the stronger an effect um, the, the, the stronger the emotional content of something that is applied to your neurology the more it affects every part of your being now if you really want to understand uh, the neurology of human beings this book is really brilliant and Richard Semon is the guy who wrote it. It's called The Meme. And it was originally, if I remember right, written in 1905 um, <coughs> in German and then translated uh, into English, I think, in 1915 or something like that. Oh, 1921. There we go. So. Uh, so the translation was done in the years 1912 to 1914 and I think it was probably published in 1921 and if I remember the, the original in German was written in, uh, um, in 1905 so you'd think that this kind of thing being old oh, it's just not going to have anything of value in it um, wrong it has a lot of stuff of value which is why I believe Richard Dawkins plagiarized this or a lot of the contents in it um, in his own work because his tutor at university was a guy that was very familiar with Richard Simmons work um, I, I don't know that uh, Dawkins has done that for certain so it's my opinion but I believe that Dick Dawkins is not about you doing that sort of thing uh, anyway in that book it describes very well and in a way that I haven't found in other books, the, how repeated um, effects on your nervous system will have systemic effects on your whole system, your mind, your way of thinking, your psychology and so on. Which we all sort of know at a theoretical level, it's quite something else to understand this at a practical level. Now, because of my history with um, martial arts since I was a little kid, 
and because I've trained as a hypnotist for a long time and I've pretty much read I think I'm one of the few people on earth that has read almost everything that Milton Erickson has written and many others besides including the fraudulent scumbag um, <coughs> that in invented NLP another Richard if I remember right I forgot his name it will come to me maybe anyway um, an understanding at a very practical real physical level how uh, repeated training or repeated effect will have an effect on your nervous system and on your body even on your how you carry yourself physically how you walk how you move your way of thinking um, you know for example in karate it's a very rigid it's what is considered a hard style and if you train in karate especially if you train in traditional karate you not, not the you know sort of more gentle stuff that happens nowadays but if you train in traditional methods of karate you will become mentally a very tough person because it is a hard way and uh, and you become hard internally as well and mentally psychologically you start to not concern yourself with defeat or with uh, pain or with uh, discomfort um, you know you just carry on showing nothing pretty much Sistema is a soft style considered um, because you don't for example there is no such specific thing as a block in Sistema you kind of absorb the, the hits or avoid them or deflect them so there isn't a hard block on block like you would have in Karate and it creates a very different type of psychology now it is a fact that if you force a person to adopt certain physical postures his psychology will begin to reflect those postures so with karate being a hard rigid style that is very sort of staccato very definite you know you, you have a movement and if it's a block it's a block and it stops there that's it done and it should be to the millimeter you become very precise your way of thinking becomes very directed and rigid Sistema being the, almost the opposite of that, you will become more flexible, you'll become more adaptive, you become... Now, keep in mind that somebody like me that's got a high IQ and a little bit of Asperger's, these are almost opposite things, they, they are literally almost opposite things. And to have become trained in them at a good level, uh, in both way, in both systems, does create an ability to understand your own nervous system and what you can and can't do that is far beyond the average normal person um, so once you understand that stuff about how it affects your own body and when you're trained to teach other people which I have I've taught both Karate and Sistema and when you're trained to understand also the psychology of a person's mind and how language affects people and so on you can then also uh, begin to understand how to apply certain techniques or certain movements or certain teaching tools to different personalities to different people to get different results you know because people are all unique if you try and teach everybody the same way some guys will excel and some guys will fall by the wayside but if you adapt your teaching to the individual you can achieve pretty good results you know throughout of course a lot of a lot of relatively a lot of people are unteachable um, in terms of learning purely from data um, they often have to be sort of led down the garden path in order to get to where they want to get and if you have the ability to understand how to help that person reach where they want to go and learn what they want to learn you know you become it's quite easy to then become sort of like a personality cult you know to which is why I wrote the book Sistema because that was happening there was personality cults in people and I always rejected that when people came to my gym and they started to train with me you know we had fighters we had guys that had been in other things or brawls or whatever or you know trained in other martial arts and they'd come there and then some of these guys and you know, not all of them you know some were pretty good some were they're all different but it, it was not unusual for a guy that had done something to come to the class, try and spar with me a bit, and 
you know like not be able to like literally put a hand on me because they were just always in the wrong place and they felt shit if I try and do something I'm gonna get hit and um, so because of that you know quite often they they started to almost like I wouldn't say worship you but you know they started to idolize you uh, one guy that I, I used to travel to, to teach these guys only once a week but I used to do like a mini seminar every time because I could only see them once a week and they were quite far from me I'd go up there for four or five hours you know I'd stay and teach them for four or five hours and it was just a small group of guys with like four or five guys um, you know I was single at the time I was seeing weird lots of different women and doing whatever I wanted so I had the time to do that and one of these guys when that I started to train he alternated between two walking sticks and a wheelchair so he was barely able to walk and yet I I trained him just like I trained all the other people you know within his limitations about three months after he started training with us this guy not only gave up his sticks and his wheelchair but he uh, he went on a 10-day cycling tour of England I know that sounds like bullshit but it isn't um, Henry uh, if, if you're watching I might actually call him up see if uh, see if he'll uh, maybe come on video or whatever I haven't seen him in, in years so it'll be interesting to know but he'll tell you that that's what he did and one day in class you know we there's a way to massage people by punching them by hitting them and at the end of the class we generally do that and you know do push-ups on each other but it's also kind of um, a way to heal certain things and I felt while I was giving him some little hits that oh there's something here and I banged quite hard he's the back of one of his legs and he jumped you know he was like oh geez that was I said but what are you in pain and it's like it's never pain it's it's like a shock you know it's a shock to the system but it's not actually pain there's no injury there's no bruising that night he called me up and he said what the hell did you do to my leg and I said why because I could never do a squat in my life and I felt that now I can and now I can and it's because you released something in my leg what you know what magic powers do you have and I was like man I don't have any magic powers you know you've done the work I just help you release the last little bit of tension so but you can see how that could get abused right and I always rejected that I'd go to people you know they'd come and shake my hand and they'd say like oh but you know you're so cool yeah. and I'd be like nah man I'm just a normal guy you know and be like no but let me shake your hand I said well you sure you want to shake my hand I mean and and they wouldn't get it you know they wouldn't get it if I just told them they just thought I was being you know falsely humble or something so when they say oh no but let me shake I said are you sure you want to shake my hand because maybe I just went to take a shit and I put a hole through the paper and I didn't bother to wash it do you, do you you know are you sure that I'm a good guy and I would do like weird little things there's just I'll do something where I just on purpose say something completely wrong or make a mistake or just look like an idiot just to like just you know I'm human we're this, this we're all the same we're all different but we're all the same you know the one who's teaching this class is the guy who can kick everybody else's ass and explain how because maybe you can kick everybody else's ass but you can't explain how so that's not good and when somebody better than me came to to the class I told him you teach you know I there's no ego in about it it was really about the thing now I didn't want to go on a long detour about my what I can do what I can't do it's not about me the point is I was trying to explain to you guys that I understand the human nervous system better than probably everybody that you know okay and it's again not arrogance it's superbia I actually do know this stuff it's not that I'm making it up it's not that and I probably know more than I would ever actually let you tell you that I would know because I am not actually arrogant I do know what I can do though and in order to explain why what I'm going to tell you next makes sense I needed to give you a little bit of background so that's why that is there now the thing with sex why it's such a powerful thing is because it you know it, it's it's a it's a, a primal directive of the human species to have sex to reproduce to have children so it's wired into us at every level which is why things like child abuse are so damaging because when you engage a child's nervous system with sexual abuse 
it screws up all their wiring. You know, their wiring is not ready for that stuff yet. And you've now linked it to all sorts of things. You've linked pain to pleasure in weird different ways, uh, shame, abuse, fear. It, they all get twisted and it can go wrong in a million different ways. In fact, considering how prevalent uh, sexual abuse is in children and, you know, by especially the, the freaks that run things, it's a miracle that, uh, you know, a lot more people are in complete train wrecks. Because, it, but it does cause you, you know, serious, serious issues down the line. That said, this is also why I have a deep distaste for what they call pickup artists, and uh, you know, most of them are complete morons. They're complete idiots. They don't know anything. And they're using sort of neurological tricks to get women in bed, and they don't know what to do with it even once they're there it's it's really quite pathetic and most of them are complete scam artists and don't really have a clue anyway but to get back to my original topic which was you know the, the reason I wanted to do this particular video was about um, the the neurological effects of sex and vice versa sex effects on the neurology and sinful people, sinful women, sinful men, you know, people that fuck around or, or that have or that do. Now, we all know that they, uh, you know, the Bible and the, the, the Christianity, uh, strictly speaking, says, you know, no sex before marriage. There are tiny loopholes here and there, but, you know, by and large, that's kind of the rule. And there's nothing wrong with the rule. The rule is correct. The rule is right. Um, unfortunately, our world is so fallen that most of us can't even really conceive of why the rule of no sex before marriage is good. And the reason we can't really conceive of that is because everything is so broken, so fallen, so far down the sewer line that it's normal to us. You know, instead of being you know, human beings that live in the sunlight, we have been used to live in the sewer so long that we think we're rats, you know, pretty much. But the problem of having sex with multiple partners for a man is not that big. Because again, biologically, we're designed to, we can, you know, make kids with 20 different women and we're still fine. You know, we can still eat and find food and stuff. It's the women that are end up getting stuck with the kids, and if we don't provide for them, die. You know, biologically, that's that's the historical uh, way of things, and it's still to a certain extent true now on m in most of the world. You know, in the first world, of course, we've gone off the fucking deep end and we've gone to mouse utopia. If you don't know what mouse utopia is. Google it. That's a really weird experiment that is basically telling us what the future of humanity is if we keep going down this route. Um, and we probably pass the point of no return. So there's, there's going to be some pretty ugly things going on eventually. But anyway, the thing is, that is the biological imperative. So as a man, you having sex with lots of different women doesn't necessarily damage your ability to connect with one particular woman further down the line. It, it does damage it, but nowhere near as much as the same activity would do for a woman. Because again, keep in mind that biologically, naturally, in the natural world, a woman that has sex with you know, multiple men will get pregnant like that. She'll get pregnant very quickly. You know, it's only because of contraception and so on that we've done that. So we're using an artificial method, which, by the way, according to Owen, I don't know if it's true or not. I haven't checked up on it. Um, according to Owen, pretty much all contraception was invented by small hats, uh, which sort of makes sense. Anyway, if that's the case, you are now using an artificial method to override the biology, but the biology is still there. And the biology is that when a woman has sex with a man, 
the intention, her whole biology is wired to connect with him deeply enough that she should be okay to procreate with him. Now, believe me, I've been with plenty of women that have no wish to procreate and just like the dick. But even so, those are women that have already gone through enough men that, you know, that's kind of how they become. Um, it's the rare woman that isn't affected by the first time that she has sex or you know the first serious boyfriend you know and it's usually one of the first one two three guys that she goes to bed with um, unless there's a you know a pretty severe screwed up family background or something like that a normal healthy woman you know young woman that has sex for the first time will tend to try and stay with that boyfriend for a long time and it's not unusual for them to you know stay together become in a long-term relationship and maybe only down the line break up and in you know quite a few cases maybe even stay together and get married of course they uh it's not zeitgeist one of the guys in the comments corrected me i forgot his name but thank you for the correction so zeitgeist uh means um something like the the mood of the era and I think it's uh, Wolfenschaum, something like that, that is worldview. So the worldview all around you is that it's perfectly fine to have sex with random people, normal strangers, whatever. And I mention again something that um, I think it was Anne Barnhart, somebody that mentioned that a young woman that went to the to the nurse to the of the of the university she was in for something totally unrelated. Um, in her medical history, the um, the nurse asked her if uh, you know how many sexual partners she has or whatever and she said oh none I'm a virgin and she'd gone there for something like bronchitis and the woman says oh would you like to see someone about that you know like a counselor about like the fact you're still a virgin at age 18 it's like what you know as if there was something wrong with her for being a virgin at age 18 you know the 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 mood of the planet is bang everybody, it's all great, it's all fun, multiple partners, orgies, you know, have three at once, whatever. You know, it's all good. It's not all good. It it corrupts you and it it um it wears away an innocence that you can't really get back. Um you can appreciate that innocence even after you've been through all this but you literally kind of have to walk through fire to get to the other side of that and um, I've done it because I have a particular psychology that means I'm very curious and I'm very rarely scared of pretty much anything um, personally at least and uh, that has got me into a lot of trouble, a lot of interesting situations, you know, not just with women, but like in, in general in life, you know. So if you're not that way built, I don't advise it for anybody. And even if you are that way built, it's not wise, okay. There are reasons why it would be good to not have sex before marriage and so on, or to just be with that one person. You know, marriage is somewhat arbitrary because it's like when you have sex, that effectively is you are now married. That's it. So whether you actually have to have the ceremony before you have the sex or just after, I don't think that's such a huge deal. The fact is that the act of copulating essentially creates the marriage. That is what I believe is the biblical interpretation of that. Now, there are very good reasons for that, but we can't see them. We can't understand them. And because of the world around us. So now, if as a woman you've had plenty of partners, and you know women are brilliant at backwards rationalizing everything, you know they can literally kill somebody and then they will backward rationalize how it was the other person's fault. Um, but the reality is, if you're a woman that's had a lot of partners, you will find it more difficult to have a genuine, deep, lasting connection with a man for a number of reasons. First of all, because the very special um, neurological activity that happens during sex that you know connects your whole body in multiple ways, especially if you you know have decent orgasms, 
that experience um, has now been had with many different people so it loses kind of its specialness if you like it becomes relatively routine um, unless and until they find somebody that can make them orgasm really hard really deeply really well and then when that happens they believe they're now in love with this person she you know it's a it's kind of a crude statement but it's a real one I've always said you know if you make a woman come really hard three times in a row she's gonna think she's in love with you now you could be the worst asshole on the planet but that's pretty much how it works um, and you know if she's had plenty of orgasms with 30 different guys you might have to make her come you know 20 times but it still works so now the thing is if you're doing the stuff if you're into this you know if you're having sex with different people if you're kind of a dog like I was or whatever you can't see why what you're doing is necessarily wrong for yourself or others but the reality is that even if you're a good guy you know I, I never um, did anything you know sexual with a woman that wasn't that was like intentionally evil or trying to hurt them or anything like that you know it's I'm just not wired that way it was always with you know it might have been kinky it might have been sexy it might have been loving it might have whatever but it was always you know very much uh, in a spirit of wanting to have a positive experience for the other person as well not just for me uh, part of my enjoyment was to make them have a good time too so that's you know I wasn't being evil and most of the people that have sex and different people and whatever they're not intentionally trying to be assholes or evil I don't think um, you know we're talking about normal people but the thing is nevertheless it still has an effect on the other person in a very powerful way so when a woman has had multiple partners it becomes more difficult for her to have a genuine experience of connection that is not just based on you know how big of an orgasm she's had but is actually based also on qualities of the other human being that are positive for her that she wants respects loves etc and this is why you know like the little gamma males especially don't understand this this is why you get um, you know the the usual oh nice guys finish last and the assholes get all the pretty girls and whatever first of all you have to understand that pretty women get hit on constantly literally every day multiple times a day by multiple different men and you also have to understand that men who are you know what what I was labeled as by one of the women I was with uh, pussy hunters are equally experienced at uh, being with different lots of different women so what happens then is the woman is desensitized to average sex to normal sex to the average nice guy and she's looking for more and more extreme experiences to satisfy her neurology and her biological need to feel a really deep strong connection with a man the dog the pussy hunter of note on the other hand he's practiced on so many women that he can pretty much make any woman have really nice orgasms extended ones multiple ones whatever so she ends up in bed with him also because he's had enough familiarity with women that he kind of knows how to get her there and then when they are in bed he actually knows what he's doing and that woman then gets hooked now he can be a total asshole and generally speaking men that have been with a lot of women don't put a huge amount of value on each specific woman after a while it's just become you know a blur of different pussy mouths faces whatever you know it's like oh she's got pretty tits yeah I might do her you know it becomes a bit like that and because you too as a man you know okay I've had an orgasm okay I've had two okay I've had ten okay I've had this sexual kink done to me and with me oh and I've done this with them oh and I've done that and I've done this other and after a while you're like well shit you know she's not hanging from the ceiling and calling her friend while we're at it uh, telling her that she's next I don't even get excited you know 
now I never went to that level of degeneracy because I I knew that it's possible and uh, I sort of I still went pretty deep into the the whole you know sexual side of things but um, you have to understand that a man that is also desensitized like that is also looking ultimately for a woman that is beyond the norm to keep his interest so that becomes more and more difficult and then on top of that you've got the world view around you on TV 24-7 that oh you know you could get the super special superhero woman that you know only squirts 10 feet but she can also make you come so that you pass out and then some and as a woman you think well you know my billionaire knight on a shining white horse pegasus unicorn that also makes me squirt to 10 feet whenever I need but he's also soft and loving and not a bastard and doesn't fuck my sister and my friends you know so you're surrounded by delusion and illusion and desensitized at a real normal level it's not a good combination you know it really isn't plus you become you have all these unrealistic expectations I mean I can't tell you the number of times that you in a bar or whatever you you see like these women that are like objectively speaking you know they're like a six or seven and you know they're all dressed up and whatever and they act in a way that you sort of think you know you really don't have the looks or the intelligence or pretty much of anything else to be that sort of um, you know standoffish or whatever and the guys who can see that stuff they know how to use it as well you know to 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 influence the woman's self-perception and perception of the guy similarly women that have been with a lot of men are you know wise to the wily ways of the pussy hunters so you you actually get to a point where where you're dealing with like women that have had a lot of sex with a lot of men and men that have had a lot of sex with a lot of women where it's literally just like a look across the the room you know if you can be in a restaurant you can be in a, in a bar you can be in a club whatever and literally just a look across the room is like you up for it yeah okay let's go that's it you know it can literally be like that because she can recognize that you know all the bullshit and you passed it and you can recognize that she's such a skanky slut that she take she she fancies you it's no point in beating around the bush too much you don't have to like you know, I've, I've never been good at bullshitting people anyway, so I've always been pretty direct. But it can literally get to the point where, like, hey, I like you, you want to come with me? And that's it, that's the conversation, you <laughs> know. Um, so, but the thing is, when you're doing that, if, if you get to that point, what do you think your chances are of having a lasting, loving relationship with uh, another person where you can? Uh, procreate have kids and it all works out for the best that's gonna be tough it's gonna be really tough so from a male perspective my advice to people that are in that space or that are currently in that space or have been there whatever is you've got to come to the realization that that's what you want and then you have got to commit it's your choice to commit no one can make you commit you commit but you commit before you've even met the woman you commit to that and realize no that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have kids I'm gonna be a good husband I'm gonna be a good dad you commit to that first and you you have to do you know your own whatever mental somersaults you have to do to get yourself there for women it's harder because your emotions are stronger your hormones are all over the place at least once a month and usually more and you've probably been desensitized by the act of sex so you've got to almost regain your innocence which is difficult um, women are not very rational creatures and to regain your in innocence consciously to regain the aspect of wonder and, and observation and uh, ability to perceive and, in, and appreciate something that you think you already know but in reality you don't because everybody's unique and you can find the detail of the person and try to understand them a little better 
to have to return consciously to the ability to see all of that is is tough for anybody but it's a lot harder for someone who cannot master their emotions or who has trouble mastering their emotions because they can only do it in little pieces here and there and it is a repetitive process of you continually bringing yourself back to no just pay attention just see and i did that you know relatively sort of uh, easily i suppose in the sense because of all the stuff that i mentioned at the beginning of the video but the thing is that i have genuinely learned you know before i even got married i genuinely learned to appreciate something about every type of woman you know there is always something there if you start to be able to look at them as unique human beings instead of you know just another place to empty your balls there is always something every person can have something at least interesting or or attractive or somehow engaging um you just have to find it sometimes and of course you know maybe even a majority of the times whatever bits you find that are good are insufficient to meet your minimum standard of acceptable um, certainly in my case that happened quite a bit because my standard for acceptable was the conscious part of it was was pretty pretty high bars anyways and the unconscious part of it which I can really do very little about despite all my training and everything is that there needs to be a physical level of beauty and attractiveness for me that clicks that key you know and I don't really have a lot of control over that um, it really isn't it's and it is pretty objective you know like the, the women that I had that sort of connection with were objectively beautiful you know they, they always had a lot of attention uh, from everybody so you know the, there's a part that even somebody that you know has all the training that I told you about not only you know maybe I could change it but I had no interest in changing it even if I thought about it consciously I was like yeah but why would I want to change that that's what I like I like that type of look I like that type of body I want to kind of be with that type of woman you know and seems really shallow maybe it is but it was a thing that I did not work at trying to change at all I knew that I probably can if I wanted to but had no interest so stack all of these things together and you start to see how difficult and how much everything is railed against you to being with somebody permanently in a good way so if you're a young woman starting out try not to spread your legs all over the place try to actually see the quality of a man before you do all that um, and some pussy hunters that you might think are really great guys might not have the patience to stick around because you know they'll be like uh, what so we like each other but you're still not gonna give it to me because you want to play hard to get oh well whatever you know I'll just do her she's here she's available and that can be kind of crushing for a woman you know but you've got to understand that you would have been just as meaningless as that other girl he picked in your place because she's available you know if you had done that um, and it's also a good thing to be able to pick up the bullshit because men I've n really never been guilty of this at all pretty much but men a lot of men most men will say whatever the fuck they need to say to get your panties off so you need to learn to pick up on the bullshit and women have got very good bullshit detectors what they don't have is uh, as strong a self-confidence in their bullshit detectors as they should perhaps now there is also the opposite problem where a woman can become so paranoid that she literally doesn't believe an honest guy who's telling the truth you know <laughs> funnily enough that's happened a lot in in my marriage you know my my wife was very paranoid about m me from the beginning um but that's because she's very smart she's a very clever woman um, she's got a high iq but it's nowhere near as high as mine so she was used to being smarter than all the guys that she's been with and all of a sudden she was with a guy that shit, this, she can't figure me out and that's scary 
you know the unknown is always frightening and for women almost invariably frightening you know it's a very rare woman that doesn't get freaked out by the unknown women are tend to go for safety security you know not knowing things that they know things that they don't know scare the shit out of them and even most men and then there's some freaks like me that are like oh what's that oh, it's a deep dark hole with no ledge oh, oh let's jump in you know again like i said it doesn't mean i'm wise I'm, I'm very intelligent it doesn't mean i'm wise um so you know the the point that i'm trying to get at is if, if you are a young woman and you maybe have had one or two or three boyfriends or whatever then be careful about having many sexual encounters with many different men it's not good for you now when you do find the right guy you know when you got the internet you got whatever do make sure that you are sexually knowledgeable maybe you haven't done all these things with somebody but that you're willing and to try whatever you know sexual stuff your husband or to be or whatever wants to try out maybe maybe look into that right because sex is an important part of relationships and you know if you're just gonna lie there like a dead starfish maybe that's not gonna do it for you and remember you know it's a joke I think Chris Rock said it uh, I don't know if he came up with it first or whatever but he said something that's actually it's funny because it's true which is women don't go backwards economically so if a woman has had a boyfriend with a Porsche it's rare that she's gonna settle for a guy with a broken down Hyundai but I've also been the guy that women that were with millionaires and billionaires, you know, would leave them to come and try and be with me. So maybe you don't need a Hyundai if you've got some other very powerful engine. You know, what I'm saying is it's all relative. But generally speaking, women will tend to not go backwards economically, financially, security wise, you know. Uh, if they've always had sort of broken ass penniless artists as boyfriends you know they might settle for a normal guy but if they've always had Ferraris in the front yard they're not gonna settle for an artist who doesn't have a fucking penny to his name unless they've got their own money and they just like the dick you know then normal situation women don't go backwards economically men don't go backwards sexually so if a guy's been a dog and he's done women in all sorts of positions and whatever he's not going to be want to be married to like a wallflower that doesn't really know anything and even if there are men that say oh no but I want my wife to be like that and they have been dogs and then they want a little prim and proper wife but generally speaking what happens is those guys get bored and end up cheating on their wives with whores or other people they eventually get caught the marriage breaks down there's all sorts of trouble so it's a fine balance and it's not easy for anybody I'm just telling you these are the pitfalls so look out for them and in terms of you know solutions oh, and also let's not forget the skanks let's not forget the sluts let's not forget the pussy hunters because we're people too you know if you are a woman that's maybe in her 30s that your biological clock is ticking you've seen hundreds of cocks and you know you're starting to fucking panic realize that what i've just told you is giving you the key to what you need to do to sort your shit out yes you are desensitized to sex you've got to resensitize yourself to it and if as a woman you've been around enough to know now what is your minimum standards of sexual satisfaction okay and let's not bullshit each other women yeah you like sex a lot so you will have a minimum standard of sexual satisfaction but it doesn't have to be the best guy that you've ever been with right it doesn't need to be that we all know that too there are other things that for women are more important whether it's stability his loyalty that sort of stuff I had an ex-girlfriend that married a guy who I know for a fact that sex with him was you know really not compatible to the sex that she had with me because she told me this she literally told me she said no sex with that guy is nothing even remotely close to what it's like with you but he's a good guy I can make a team with him we know we can have a good life together and 
that's what I'm what I'm gonna do. And it, you know, it's worked out. I've been married for years now, and so on. So she made the right choice, and she had um, a lot of you know pretty traumatic. She had some very serious traumatic experiences in her life, um, sexual ones. And then she'd also been relatively promiscuous after that, which is something that happens quite normally. But she had made that journey of going through all that stuff and then choosing for herself what was best for her. And it works, you know, it, it's doable. Um, similarly, if you're a pussy hunter and you can't stop, and believe it, I, I know guys like that, you know, I've, I've to a certain extent, no, you know, not in that to that level, but to a certain extent, I've been that guy because I used to go through, you know, I used to get to a stage where I was seeing three, four, five women, sometimes even sort of at the same time. I wasn't lying to any of them. And then I'd get sick of all of them and I'd get rid of all of them and I'd go by myself for a week or two and then it would start again, a new cycle, a new four or five women, you know. And if, if you're that guy that can't stop and doesn't, you know, he doesn't know what the hell, you know, he's just like, oh, wow, I just, oh, there's a new face, oh, there's a new, there's a new look, there's a new short skirt, there's a new thing. Eventually, you've got to get to a point where you realize it's, you're just wasting time. And you're wasting their time, you're wasting your time, you're not achieving anything substantial. And then you have to make the journey back to loyalty focus being with one woman making that one woman be exciting for you every day in 20 different ways even when she pisses you off even when she starts to leave the tooth cap you know the toothpaste cap off the toothpaste tube when she starts to do that shit you know still find her attractive sexy exciting somehow right it's not easy for anybody i'm just telling you these are knowing and thinking and using your mind is always worth it so don't just you know i say don't just go with your heart i've always gone with that in a certain to a certain extent but the way i see it is like you know my brain is there to make me survive the journeys that my heart makes me go on uh, people think that you should use the brain to choose your journeys Maybe that works for English people. I don't know. Sure, shit doesn't work for me. Um, what the works for me is no. That is what I feel inside me. That's what I need to do. That's that's the thing that feels right in here. How the hell I'm gonna do it? I don't know. The tools I don't have. The not you know. It's everything is arrayed against me. But that's what feels right. And then I have to use my brain to survive that journey somehow. If you're gonna try and live like that. You gotta be tough, okay? You gotta be mentally, emotionally, spiritually tough because otherwise you will get crushed. If you're more like an English guy, you know, English person that is like thinks everything through and only makes the sensible decision, for most people that's the better way to go, smartest way to go, wiser way to go, and usually far more successful. Um, definitely, almost always more successful uh, in very real practical terms. So that's that. I um, I don't know. I hope I've said something that's useful. Uh, part of the reason that I made this video is also because uh, one of my friends online um, said, you know, was talking about his his kids that are all grown up now and saying, you know, they they I want to try and give them some advice and tell them the mistakes I've made so that they don't make the same fuck ups that I've made. So uh, part of it was also that. To let you know that you know whether you're Christian or not whether you believe the Bible or not it's sort of irrelevant that the point is there are really good reasons to try and control your passions and if it's too late if you haven't controlled them you can still always come back you know you can always learn to discipline yourself better and in the long run if you do that it's uh, it's wiser and it's uh, it's better for you. If you actually want to achieve anything of note, eventually you will have to learn that lesson. So better to learn it early rather than late. Okay, that's it. Good night.